This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. There are real costs, well, far beyond academics, but to our kids if they're not in school. Vice President Mike Pence back in Indiana today. His message, he said students need to be back in the classroom while taking measures to stay safe and healthy. A live report in moments. COVID-19 cases are dramatically rising in Indiana. In fact, today, a single day record of new cases. The latest numbers and where we now stand. New COVID-19 restrictions now in place in Marion County. The impact this could have on bars, some of which have been ordered to close. And you may soon be asked for exact change if you are paying with cash at a local business. We'll show you why and how a coin shortage is hurting a group that helps families in need. Good evening to you here on this Friday. Good to have you here with us. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. First on the news at 6, a little more than three months away from the presidential election. And Vice President Mike Pence spent a few hours back in his home state of Indiana. The vice president speaking at Marion University in Indianapolis, saying students need to be back in the classroom even as we continue to deal with the pandemic. RTV 6's Stephanie Wade covering Vice President P Pence all day. She's live with why he is saying it's time for students of all ages to return to school. Stephanie. Mark and Amanda, for about an hour, leaders discussed why it's so important to have students back at school. The vice president saying he wants to get them back in the classroom and back there this fall. How he plans on doing that, he says, is by everyone wearing one of these. Opening up our schools again is the best thing for our kids. Uh, it's also the best thing for working families, and it's the best thing for moving this state and our country forward. So it's really not a matter of if schools reopen, it's a matter of how they reopen safely. It was the same message from all of the higher education leaders participating in today's roundtable discussion at Marion University. Dr. Deborah Burks and Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos also making the trip from Washington, D.C. The three of us are here, Governor, to say to you and the people of Indiana, we're with you and we're going to stay with you. The CDC just issued additional recommendations last night for schools, teachers and parents when it comes to testing and protecting everyone. Pence emphasizing today the need to have protocols in place on every campus and students wearing masks to get back to in person. That students fall behind dramatically in education. Uh, one study estimates that due to school closures last spring, the average student is going to begin this year roughly 35% behind in reading compared to the typical year and 50% behind in math. In fact, the National Education Association just recently stated that online learning is no substitute for in-person learning. Kids aren't meant to be alone. They're social. They need to be together with other students. And parents and their children can't be held captive to others' fears or agendas. Now to help schools safely reopen, Vice President Pence says they've already secured $30 billion in funding, half of which to go toward higher education, the other half for K through 12 schools. Plus, he says the White House just recently requested an additional $105 billion again to help schools safely reopen. Reporting live, I'm Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Stephanie, thank you for that live report. And tonight, RTV6's Rafael Sanchez has a one-on-one -on -one interview with Dr. Deborah Burks, who is the coordinator for the White House Coronavirus Task Force. Dr. Burks joined Vice President Pence in speaking at Marion University today. Rafael is asking her about the warning Indianapolis received to take aggressive action due to a spike in COVID-19 cases. Rafael will also ask Dr. Burks about schools reopening and the direct impact that has on our state. You can watch portions of our interview with Dr. Burks tonight on the news at 7 and 11, and we will post the entire interview on the IndyChannel.com and the RTV6 app. Today, the state is dealing with a single day record of COVID-19 cases in Indiana. The state health department reports 1,011 new cases of COVID-19. Again, that is a single day record and an increase from yesterday. Since the pandemic began, 60,598 people in Indiana have been diagnosed with coronavirus. There are four COVID-19 deaths in Indiana, new deaths to report. 
That's down from 17 new deaths yesterday. So far, 2,687 Hoosiers have died from COVID-19. More than 678,000 people have been tested for the coronavirus in Indiana, and 8.9% of them tested positive for it. There is a slight decrease in the number of Hoosiers hospitalized with COVID-19. As of yesterday, 850 people were in Indiana hospitals with coronavirus. On July 21st, 869 people were hospitalized with the virus. We don't have data for July 22nd because of a technical issue the State Department of Health had. The state says 52% of its ICU beds are available. COVID-19 patients are using 13% of the ICU beds. Non-COVID-19 patients are using more than 34% of the beds. More than 83% of the state's ventilators are available as well. New restrictions are now in effect in Marion County due to a big increase in COVID-19 cases. Mayor Joe Hogsett says Indianapolis's positivity rate has jumped by nearly 50% in the last week. He says that is why Marion County must reverse course a bit to help slow and stop the spread of the coronavirus. So starting today, social gatherings won't be able to exceed 50 people. That includes weddings banquets, club meetings, and any event where we come together to socialize. Indoor religious services can be held at 50% capacity. Outdoor services may continue without restriction. Bars and nightclubs that do not serve food must close until at least August 12th, including bar seating at restaurants. Indoor restaurant service may operate at 50% capacity. Outdoor seating remains preferred. Hair salons, spas, and tattoo parlors may operate by appointment only. Gyms and fitness centers may operate at 25% capacity. And all in-person schooling is delayed until August 5th. However, virtual learning can begin right away. Again, this all went into effect today. And bars and distilleries in Indianapolis are working to figure out what's next as they once again are ordered to close their doors to the public. It's all because of the rising number of COVID-19 cases in Marion County. Megan Singtorum spoke with one bar to find out the impact this will have on them and how they plan to make it through the next few weeks. Leaders with Hotel Tango tell us they knew closing again was a possibility, but they say they have a plan in place and they're working to adjust their business model. If you're looking to go to a bar or nightclub in Indianapolis, you'll probably find a closed sign like this on the door. It sounds like we've had folks knocking on the door throughout the day. So, uh, yeah, obviously having to turn people away already who haven't heard the news, which you never want to do. The inside once again quiet and empty as the mayor orders bars to close for the second time during this pandemic. We hear the information and we say, OK, how do we move forward? At Hotel Tango, moving forward means shifting the focus toward the sale of their products, their hand sanitizer and PPE. We're all in this together. We all have to do our part. Nobody gets through this without suffering a little bit, um, and, and we're just going to continue to be flexible. Some say this second closure will be tough on people who work in the service industry and rely on customers and tips. The timing especially hard as the additional $600 a week pandemic unemployment benefit is set to end July 31st. We were hopeful that we'd gotten through the bulk of the storm, but we also understand that the priority is the health and safety of the city and the state and the country and the, and the world for that matter. Um, so we're going to do whatever we have to do to contribute meaningfully. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. State lawmakers are concerned about new numbers that show nursing home deaths are higher than the state originally reported. At least 1,390 residents have died at Indiana long-term care facilities since March 1st, making up 53% of the state's total deaths. That's 128 more deaths than listed on the state's coronavirus dashboard. Representative Ed Delaney is concerned that because that data doesn't even include 18% of nursing homes who have failed to meet the state's reporting deadline. He says this shows the importance of good data collection from early on. We have a right to know what's going on in the places we pay for. Okay, we pay through our taxes. That, that's what we have a right to, and we, and we weren't getting it, and, and we need to be getting it. And, you know, the data problem, there is no happy data, okay, in this crisis. The state is still working to gather the remaining information and plans to release its nursing home dashboard in about three weeks. It will contain real-time information on nursing home deaths and cases broken down by facility. In the meantime, we've created our own database on our website, theindychannel.com, so you can look up your loved one's nursing home.
Today, Governor Eric Holcomb officially signed an executive order mandating the wearing of masks for Hoosiers beginning on Monday. This order will remain in effect until at least August 26th. The mask mandate will apply for anybody eight years old or older in public indoor spaces, on public transit, outside when it's not possible to be socially distant, and in schools. The final executive order does not include criminal penalties for not wearing a mask. The need is great. If you have clean clothes, uh, you're very fortunate. Um, but there are many in our community who do not. Tonight, business owners all across the country, including right here in central Indiana, are asking customers to use exact change when paying with cash. The Federal Reserve says the pandemic is causing a disruption in the supply chain and circulation patterns of coins. Tonight, our Nicole Griffin is showing us it's an issue that is not just impacting businesses, but also a group that helps families in need. With the situation the way it is, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. At a time when having clean clothes is critical during the pandemic, Laundry and More had to cancel its Tuesday laundry date two weeks in a row after only receiving one roll of quarters from the bank. We spend $400 a week on average and $10 is only seven and a half loads. Laundry and More is a program we first told you about last year. Abby Vesga is the founder. Along with volunteers and members of Servants of Christ Lutheran Church, they did 12,000 loads of laundry in 2019 and assisted around 2,000 families at the Post Road Laundromat at 42nd and Post Road. You see not only them walking out with, with clean clothes, but I've seen people with hope come back into their eyes and, and, and those little twinkles. It's not just about doing laundry. They also connect families with housing, medical and dental resources. And we've walked with a number of people that, you know, whom we met and they were living in their car, you know, who didn't have a job and who um, through uh, a community working together, you know, they found hope again. Laundry and more will be back next week after Abby put the call out on Facebook and was able to get some quarters donated and exchange money with a local vending company. But she estimates what's in these bags will only last about three weeks. I really did not know that COVID was going to affect our organization because people need laundry. In effort to help with the coin supply problem we are dealing with right now, the U.S. Mint is putting out a call to action for people to start spending their coins, depositing them, or exchanging them at financial institutions. Working for you, Nicole Griffin, RTV6. And as the economy recovers and businesses reopen, the Federal Reserve says more coins will flow back into retail and banking channels, which should allow for the rebuilding of coin inventories. The U.S. Mint is operating back at full production after temporarily reducing the number of employees during the pandemic and minting almost 1.6 billion coins a month. Working for you during this pandemic means looking for ways to help people. Today, the charity Second Helpings received a check for $12,000. It was presented on behalf of RTV6 and the Scripps Howard Foundation. The charity will use the dollars to support its feeding program throughout Indianapolis. The organization has increased the number of prepackaged meals it delivers to people who are hungry. The COVID-19 pandemic is responsible for more than just health issues. It's also responsible for thousands of job losses in Indiana. And that's why our Hiring Hoosiers initiative is so important right now. Let's get to the job feed. Lawn Pride has two open positions right now. The locally owned lawn care company needs a lawn technician and a lawn aerator. Weekly overtime is common. You need to have a valid driver's license and you must be able to repeatedly lift up to 50 pounds. Surge staffing in Indianapolis is looking for anyone interested in becoming a quality inspector for Honda in Greensburg. Pay is about $13 an hour. Daniel's Market off of East Hadley Road in Camby is looking to hire full and part-time workers for their 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. shift as well as their 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. shift. They will train employees to work as cashiers and to work in the deli. Learn more about these jobs and apply on the job board at HiringHoosiers.com and on the Hiring Hoosiers Facebook page. There we also have many other positions you can look at. And RTV6 is teaming up with the Indiana Black Expo to bring you the virtual Hiring Hoosiers Employment Opportunity Fair. It's Thursday, July 30th from noon until 4 p.m. Quality employers are coming together to help you take the next steps in your career. Immediate job openings are available. To get connected, visit IndianaBlackExpo.com. A blue sky now leads to a beautiful Friday evening. What changes for the weekend? Find out next. 
The whole season is one long road trip, but the Indiana Fever are finally set to play their first game of 2020 coming up. See how the team is keeping things fun in the bubble and how they're lining up for game number one. Our beautiful Friday gives us momentum into the weekend. We'll hold on to that. Both Saturday and Sunday dry. I put a 20% chance of a thunderstorm on Sunday, but I think that's really pretty high. The more likely time for thunderstorms will arrive Monday, which will mark a transition to cooler temperatures for most of next week. Although today was cooler, 85 the high, we step it up a little bit tomorrow and Sunday, and probably the more noticeable change will be the humidity climbing once again, a more tropical feel. I mentioned the rain chance Monday. Let's look at Sunday late overnight into Monday. There's the cold front that lines up to the north and west early Monday. That will be the spark for thunderstorms, but eventually open the door to drier air, lowering the humidity once again. Now you see them, tonight you won't. The clouds will fade away. Temperature 81 in Fishers, 86 in Edinburgh. Zionsville also in the low 80s. Temperatures along the Ohio River right at 90. We've pushed temporarily the warmest air to the south. It will drift back north as the wind direction comes back more to the southwest at the latter part of the weekend. Notice the overnight lows. For the next three mornings, they'll gradually warm up. Monday's morning low of 73 is the warmest within the seven-day forecast, and then the overnight low temperatures become more comfortable. Saturday, light wind, 87 for the high. Noticeable humidity once again. Temperatures just about anywhere in, in Indiana in the upper 80s. If you're traveling tomorrow across the state, headed to uh, one of the many reservoirs, going to some water, it will be a great day for that. Sunday, 90, it will feel feel more like 95 because of that humidity climbing through the day. Temperatures upper 80s to low 90s. That would be the general range as you can see uh, with the seven day forecast unveiled. After Monday's thunderstorms, our chance for showers and thunderstorms opens the door to cooler conditions Tuesday through Friday. Overnight low temperatures are back into the mid 60s and those afternoon highs just shy of the average high of 85. That's something to look forward to, but enjoy the weekend. It will be warm summer weekend. We can handle it. Mark, Amanda. I am looking forward to it. Well, the Indiana Fever will open the WNBA schedule this weekend. Their first game is tomorrow. It will clearly be unlike any of the 20 seasons before Mark. But with that, uncertainty becomes opportunity for that team. Brad Brown has a look at their final week of preparations in tonight's Sports Extra Spotlight. There is plenty of work to be done inside the WNBA's so-called Wubble this summer, but that doesn't mean the Fever aren't having some fun. I have my two young little girls here who get to watch um, these confident, strong, um, women who are excellent at their craft um, day in and day out and you know more is caught than taught and in, in this instance um, I couldn't be more thankful. Assistant coach April Schilling has her daughters Ava and Callie along for the journey. Just another something extra to try and make the best of this situation. We've had a good time so far. Um, now this is uh, a few weeks in so you might ask me this in a few months to see if it's the same, <laughs> the same response. The Fever are ready to rebuild after struggling for a couple years. A combo of some veteran leadership and promising new talent adds up to a ton of potential. I'm a person who loves practice because I think practice is your laboratory where you get better and you get to try things and then you take it out onto the court and you, you know, just go for it each and every time. So uh, I like to have a group that is hungry to learn and hungry to get better. Even coming into a regular season, that's a big piece of it, is trying to get to know each other, trying to, um, and that's on and off the court, how each other thinks, how each other reacts. And add a pandemic and add when we didn't have a traditional training camp, add us coming late into this, it creates a lot more um, uneasiness. I think that everyone's adjusting well. Um, you don't really see that, you know, we have a new coaching staff besides the fact that, you know, the schemes are different. But I mean, the, the goal is still the same. You want to win a championship. You want to compete day in and day out. Either way, there is now basketball to be played. A 22-game adventure that has endless possibilities. Regarding like how the bubble kind of affects us, you just try to not think about it. Because even trying to adjust and try to stay in shape, 
try to eat right. It's just so much stuff that goes into this thing. And at the end of the day, all you can do is be positive. I'm just really excited about, you know, the way the players look energized. Uh, we've gone through the process, obviously, of getting down here. And the last couple of weeks have definitely been, um, been I, I think they've made us stronger as a team. A programming note, if you're a Dish Network customer, our parent company Scripps and Dish are currently in contract negotiations and this station may go dark tonight if an agreement is not reached in time. If you are a Dish customer, you can call Dish and express your concern. WRTV is still producing news for you and you can still watch WRTV news if this channel goes dark. You can always find us at the IndieChannel.com or you can watch us on the RTV6 streaming apps on Roku, Android TV, Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TV, the RTV6 app and over the air with an antenna. Today's RTV6 photo of the day comes to us from Pam Connor, who lives on Indianapolis's north side. Since April, Pam has been getting an interesting visitor in her backyard. This fox has been showing up and wandering around. Pam says that it has been fun watching the fox's comings and goings. Yeah, you can send in your photo of the day. Email it to news at WRTV.com. Got to be quick to catch the fox. I always love brushes with nature like that. Love it. Temperatures in the morning, relatively cool. They'll be in the 60s. Afternoon temperatures, a different story. We'll warm about 20 degrees in most cases. 80 at 11 a.m., a few clots, and 87, your afternoon high tomorrow. Sounds perfect for a Saturday. We'll see you back here at 7, though.